if you take that person and put them in a networking space or somewhere where you have to, they have to be out there, you mean, you send them to meetups and I mean, they're going to be operating, you know, at, at a higher capacity for eight hours, just because sure. if it's within their, they don't have to adapt so much psychologically to that particular role. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's very interesting because that's how you create longevity. I mean, you have some people who are killers right they have they have the talent they have the know-how they have the skill set and right. then you plug them into the wrong seat what what happens is that they get they're going to get tired super fast i mean mm -hmm. mentally right and and it's it's uh just a really um you know cool thing to understand as you're building up a business welcome back everyone to the passive road to retirement podcast i'm your host andrew jarrett today we're joined by rafael cortez Raphael is a real estate coach and organizational psychologist. He owns a traditional brokerage and a wholesaling and fix and flip business. Other companies include verticals in education, software, and an organizational psychology practice focused on business coaching and consulting. He has profitably, profitably invested in real estate since 2009, doing everything from fix and flip, creative financing, wholesaling, which has yielded him millions of dollars in profits to date. He's now passionate about using his investment knowledge, entrepreneurial experience, and background in business psychology to help other entrepreneurs succeed through his wholesaling coaching programs. He teaches his students how to find, negotiate, and close real estate deals while building a successful and sustainable business in the process. Raphael, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. It's an honor yeah. to be. Yeah, 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 great to have you on. So, Thanks. I guess... Uh, so 2009, so I know you were a firefighter for five years, right? The youngest yeah. county, I believe, at the time. Yeah. Uh, so how did you transition from that into uh, into real estate? So um, uh, at 19 years old, I became a firefighter in Yuma. And um, and I, I just, I, I started having conversations with, with captains and people who had life, you know, figured out a lot better than I did at 19. Sure. Um, and, and it's, it's one of those principles, right? I mean, the, the people that you associate with, um, you end up becoming, you know, like them or, or mirroring, you know, those people. So I started to, sure. to mirror just, you know, some of the behaviors that I was seeing in, uh, in, in my captains at the firehouse and, and people who are thriving, but, um, but I didn't. I didn't get uh, into real estate right out of the gate. So uh, when I was at the firehouse, I started my first business, which was a non-emergency medical transportation business, hmm. uh, and and I just you know that's where I got my feet wet when it came to entrepreneurship. So I started uh, putting together the business plan around. I don't know. I was 20, 21 years old, and rolled with that. Uh, eventually, I left the fire department to um, to go all in on that business, and that was the uh, the transition uh, period. I mean, it was it was a bit tough, right? It's it's nerve wracking when when you start right. to uh, bet on yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, give up that paycheck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, you know that that uh, the blanket of security. Um, and, um, uh, I mean, it was just a wonderful experience though, because it's, it's, I mean, it did put me in, in, in some tough, tough, uh, situations. Um, I mean, I saw a rock bottom there, but the, uh, the, uh, the dream was always, you know, kept alive. Good thing. Right. Because I didn't, I mean, I right. put myself in a spot where I didn't really have any other choice. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. really about, I wish I could say it was all tenacity and, and, and virtue, right. You know, right. <laughs> that I had going on, but no, the reality is that, I mean, I, I, I pulled the trigger too quick on certain things and, and uh, I put myself in a tough spot. So it was sink or swim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Burn the boats, right? <laughs> yeah. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, that worked out um, after a few years, and and I started you know uh, just putting some cash together and whatnot. And around two thousand nine, I jumped into uh, uh, into uh, my first flip, first rehab, first fix and flip project, and and really tapped into real estate. Um, never looked back, man. I've been in real estate since. Awesome. Hey everyone, hope you're enjoying this episode. Are you ready to maximize your real estate investing to its full potential? Join us at Level Up REI Coaching and take your life and business to all new levels. Send an email to nick at leveluprricoach.com. That's nick, N-I-C, at leveluprricoach.com. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. I mean, you hear like the circle of influence, the top five people you hang out with. I mean, that's a great point. Yeah. You hang out with four millionaires, you're going to be number five, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible how that works, man. I mean, it really, as we, as we grow, right. And, and everybody has you know, different contexts on, on how they view life, but uh, your background has a lot to do with it. We have, you know, we get, we get classical classically conditioned through the years, right. To see life a certain way. And, yeah. and then we start creating limitations and then next thing you know, you have a really great conversation with somebody who just thinks outside of the box mm -hmm. um, and, and numbers and limits and that kind of stuff just don't factor into their mindset. Right. And you're like, what the hell is going on with this person? They're crazy. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you start, you know, I mean, for lack of a better term, you, you, you get contaminated with the good stuff. And, right. um, and I mean, I think, I think those are, those are the relationships that we, we need to pursue right as entrepreneurs yeah. it's easy to get bogged down and, and then put ourselves in this little black hole right. um but having having you know somebody to reach out to uh or or people like that in your life as an entrepreneur it's it's crucial it's crucial yeah, yeah. yep i agree so you started uh fix and flip did you do that for long or did you get right into wholesaling or how you know how that kind of evolved no so i did everything wrong my first uh, uh rehab project uh so my background was construction before the fire department. I would uh, just work construction every summer as a kid. And, and I mean, I knew framing masonry and plumbing and all that stuff. Nice. Um, so I, I was always into trades growing up just to make cash. Right. I grew up in a mobile home, so I had, we had to figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and so it, it kind of went back to the thing that I knew, right. I'm going to fix a house, flip sure. a house, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, and I didn't leverage anything. I had some cash. Uh, I bought the whole thing. I mean, I think I made like two thousand dollars after six months of, you know, blood, sweat, and tears on that thing. Right. And uh, and I was like, this is not a business model. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, how are people surviving on, on, on rehab projects? But I mean, I right. just didn't know what I was doing. But I did better on the next one. So I did, I think, three properties, and then I, I actually paid attention to the settlement statement on one of those, and I started. I saw this assignment fee. <laughs> uh for you know somebody for the guy who i bought the the, the property from right mm -hmm. um, but i wasn't looking at contracts i mean i wasn't really paying attention to where the deal was coming sure. um and it's like wow this guy is making eighteen thousand dollars on this and i made four yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I mean anyway and, and it was all me i mean i was just buying expensive stuff i was over um you know remodeling and stuff that wasn't supposed to be doing and i mean you name it yeah. um but um, but yeah. So, anyways, I found out about uh, I found out about wholesaling, and then I asked him. He was like, "Yeah, it's my assignment fee." And I was like, "All right, cool. You're making cash. I like it." Yeah. Um, how do I do that? And then I I started just kind of you know tapping into it, listening to podcasts. Um, came across my first uh, who turned out to be my first mentor, uh, Sean Terry, and um and his podcast. So I started listening to him, and I, I closed a couple of wholesale deals. Um, and then I ended up working acquisitions for his company. So I sold my my business, the transportation business. I, I still had it, mm -hmm. uh, but I sold it, and and I came to to a point where I had you know I, I had a, a good amount of cash. I did well in the sale, yeah. And and I wanted to get into wholesaling, right? But mm -hmm. um, so um, he sends out an email looking for an acquisitions guy. Like, nice. I mean, I don't. I, I mean, if I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna you know the tip of the spear, right? You're paid to learn, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I went there. It, long story short, I get hired. I spent about three years uh, just running uh, as an acquisitions manager for him, and I mean, did a, did hundreds of deals with him, and and I mean, it turned out to be a, a you know killer experience. Um, so yeah, from that point forward, man, it's it's just like I I love uh the the just the concept of flipping paper, right? That the right. Uh, selling the vested interest in a property. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier than swinging hammers and and dealing with contractors yeah. and stuff. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and probably yeah. not as much uh, risk in the long run, right? Well, yeah, I mean, in monetary. There's a definitely you know elbow grease that goes into it, right? Because you have to learn the skill set of you know negotiation, marketing, and basically right. what happens is that you become this marketing entity mm -hmm. uh, to find you know motivated sellers and distressed properties. But once you're there, bro, like you you have like one thing I love now is I own multiple uh, multiple businesses. I have of course the the coaching consulting business uh, for the organizational psychology practice, and then um, uh, where we teach real estate and business in general. And I have the fix and flip business, the wholesale. business business, which is Pulse Capital, and then Pulse Realty, which is a brokerage. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens is that they all start talking to each other. Right. Um, and and uh, just you know, create the like this little ecosystem where where you know the same the same avatar, the same you know client for for one of the the businesses can you know be plugged into the other ones as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So now for those who might not know, just before we go on, an assignment fee, maybe you can just kind of 
detail out what that is. We have a lot of like multifamily people uh, that mm-hmm. and single family. They might not, you know, know what that so, is. So, so uh, thanks for bringing it back. Um, the um, so one thing, what happens with wholesaling, right? Wholesaling real estate, and, and um, it, it's you're negotiating a property um, under market value. So you have to negotiate a property at a discount, right? Maybe it needs uh, rehab. Uh, people are being relocated. There has to be some type of, of need there for the seller. Anybody who can sell traditionally, they're going to do that and make more money. That's fine. Mm-hmm. So it's not our it's not our avatar. Right. Um, but what happens, we come in, we negotiate a property and, and we sell. I mean, we, we get a signature on the contract. And what we're doing is we're selling our vested interest in that contract. So just to kind of pick, paint a picture, if a property on, on the market repaired and, and ready to move in, it's worth $200,000. Sure. Uh, I negotiate that property for uh, say 130, mm-hmm. right? It needs maybe 20, $30,000 worth of rehab, but I have it negotiated at 120. I'm going to sell that contract to somebody who's going to come in and actually flip it for say 160 or, mm-hmm. you know, 150, right? Now me as a wholesaler, I keep the difference between that 20, uh, that 120 and then whatever I sell it for, which is $20,000. And that's the assignment fee. Yep. And what you're doing is you're selling, again, you're not selling the actual real estate. You're selling your best in interest, your, your your equity in the deal. That's what you're mm-hmm. selling. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now, are you going a direct to seller for a lot of these? Or yeah, 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 hundred yeah, percent. So, so that's the thing, right? Now, it's it's uh, direct to seller. It's easier easier said than done. There's so many different um, you know avenues for marketing, but it's, mm-hmm. it's one of those things that uh, consistency really takes the day. I mean, there's there there for example, like the two uh, the two vehicles that we use for marketing that that are just constant. It's cold calling. I made the big mistake of of stopping my cold calling operation for I think about two and two months a while back, mm. and it just totaled everything that you know really? all the wow. yeah all the traction that we had yeah. in the business because a couple of things happened with the other stuff right so we had different um, vehicles we had cold calling we had text messaging we had pay per click and and we relied too much on the other ones but algorithms change and and red flags with carriers and you know i mean all kinds of stuff on on that space right mm-hmm. the one thing that's always been a constant is is you know having conversations right? right so cold calling has always been one of the backbones um and and yeah we're not dropping that one again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's all direct to seller it's all direct to seller so it's a matter of understanding what lists to pull uh what you know spots in what cities um or demographics you know to to really focus on to get the most roi out of what you're doing sure uh, and then really creating those campaigns and having ways to automate and delegate that stuff okay and yeah. Now you're big on uh, business systems, right? I've, I looked through your Instagram. Seems like you're really big on having like, yeah set up and and not being you know working eighty hours a week, right? <laughs> yeah, well, one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest things is that uh, you know hustle is a season. It's not a business strategy, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I think I think uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the entrepreneurs, the real estate entrepreneurs, uh, we have that chip on our shoulder. Like I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna work my bones off to right. to make it, and then you end up making it, but you have no time. So so yes. I think um, a, a good a counterbalance right between between you know the goals that we're trying to set up uh financial freedom and time freedom you know mm-hmm. is really required um to to just get to a point where you're you're sustainable not even to a point where you know you're, you're taking over the world financially but you know right. it's sustainable you like something like that where you delegate and automate uh, a lot of stuff you know will allow you to step into bigger spaces right and and just you know thrive in whatever other area you want to thrive in yeah so yeah systems do that like the the freedom is in the systems whole cliche yeah. but it's, mm-hmm. it's so true yeah yeah work on your yeah. business not in your business right yeah yeah and you've got the uh the less business more profits system right maybe you can kind of go over that what that is exactly um, yeah, so less business, more profits. It's it's an acronym for lean, effective, strategic, and simple, right? It's just mm-hmm. four elements, four key elements that I look for um, in a- anything that I tap into. So if I'm if I'm creating a new process, uh, the overall business structure, in and you know, I go back and I sit with that, right? Is my business running lean? Uh, is everything that I'm doing there effective? Mm-hmm. Uh, and not just to, you know, because you can be very efficient, right? You can be very efficient right. at things. But if you're being super efficient at stacking, you know, a million paper clips, that's not really <laughs> going to pay you at the end of the day. You know right. what I mean? Is yeah, it effective exactly. in terms of of you know where I want to get to and the goals and 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 you know the 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 ultimate you know uh, route of of the business? Right. Um, strategic is everything methodical. Is there are there redundancies in the business? Are, are there stuff that we can combine maybe to just increase the uh, the effectiveness right of the of the mm-hmm. overall operation and that sort of thing? Yeah. And then simple man 
simpl- uh, simplifying stuff is it's always going to be one of the hardest things. Um, I put together a, a an operating system or a CRM, right, for for our, for wholesaling specifically, and I built this big monster of a thing. It's great. It had all the bells and whistles, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, all kinds of code and integrations and stuff like that. But I mean, I, I saw it and I thought it was like the most beautiful thing in the world. And then I plug somebody into it. It's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. like, how do I operate it? Mm-hmm. You know, how do I, you know, so it's, it's, it's not, if something is the moral of the story, if something is not simple enough, your team is not going to use it. Right. Right. It has to be simple enough that people can actually take it, implement and be held accountable. So everything has to be super clear. And those, those four key elements just kind of bring me back. Right. It's like a, it's, I think of it as a, as a checklist of of what my company needs to look like. It's got to be lean. It's got to be effective. It's got to be strategic and simple. If yep. I can put something together like that, um, I know I'm on the right path. So, mm-hmm. so yep. that's the premise of that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Now, how does uh, psychology fit into all this in real estate? Um, it's all psychology, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, starting from from uh, from individual mindset, right? So I, I'm an, I'm an organizational psychologist, mm-hmm. me- meaning that my my emphasis is in business, um, operations, hiring, and, and team building, and that sort of thing. But it really comes down to to holding that space, holding that mindset, right? Uh, you know, one as a as a CEO, as an owner, um, because whatever happens with you is going to be mirrored by your team, right? If you if you're in the right state of mind, if you're in the right space, um, your team is going to adopt that and they're going to run with that. Mm -hmm. So it starts with us. um, But then you know how do how do the systems talk to to the rest of of the team, right? Are you plugging the right people uh, into the right operations? Uh, like one of the things that I that I leverage, I mean, a lot is is hiring based on on behavioral tendencies and and natural you know strengths. Um, so, for example, if you have somebody who's who's very outgoing and and you know conversational and they they like to be super social, and you take that person and you plug them into a cubicle. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to be able to perform. It's not, it's not going to be a matter of skill set, you know, maybe, but they're going to perform, but they're going to be worn out after four hours of being in there. You know what I mean? They get tired, they get frustrated, stress increases, mm-hmm. and it's just not their natural habitat. If you take that person and put them in a networking space or somewhere where you have to, they have to be out there, you mean, you send them to meetups and I mean, they're going to be operating, you know, at, at a higher capacity for eight hours, just because sure. if it's within their, they don't have to adapt so much psychologically to that particular role. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and and that's very interesting because that's how you create longevity. I mean, you have some people who are killers, right? They have they have the talent, they have the know how, they have the skill set, and right. then you plug them into the wrong seat. What what happens is that they get they're going to get tired super fast. I mean, mm-hmm. mentally, right? And and it's it's uh, just a really um, you know cool thing to understand as you're building up your business. Okay, what what uh, special traits do I need for this? Uh, you know, particular role, for example, acquisitions, you have a very, you know, specific type of, of avatar that mm-hmm. fits that acquisition, um, a model, and then you, you don't have that much of attrition. So attrition, um, you know, people will jump into a, a role, or they'll get hired. And usually we, we can sustain something that that, that it's not ideally for us for a period of about three months. And mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen it in your experience, but I used to see this a lot, especially when I had the transportation business, I would hire drivers and they would do good for three months and then uh, just performance will start to dwindle. Yeah. I mean, they just, you know, mentally get tired from dealing with that spot. That's not good for them. And mm-hmm. then we had other people that were just like fish and water. Yeah. I mean, people could drive for, you know, you know, all day and be super happy at the end of the day. It's just like, they love that space because of their behavioral, um, natural behavioral strengths. Yep. So, you know, that's, that's, some of the some of the aspect, but then you have all the you know the systems and the processes. How do how does that connect with um, uh, you know with with building leaner models and 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 I mean it's it's just it's a really you know fascinating thing when you're seeing the overall operation. Sure, like the thing has a brain. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now yeah. Uh, for hiring like that, do you do like a Tony Robbins disc test or some kind of other test? Do you have them? take one yeah. of those or have you built anything that you haven't taken? Uh, I did. So I built, I built a, and I mean, we use that in house, but I built assessments and, and they're based off of uh, the disc behavioral profiling. Mm-hmm. Uh, we look at primaries and secondaries and, and then just craft after, after the specific role that I'm looking for, I'll figure out what type of person, what type of, you know, individual would fit that role better. And okay. then we, we, we do a um, general testing on behaviors and, and personalities. And we have a, a, you know, multiple tiered process. So it's not just the, 
the um, the you know checking off the answers and that's a perfect avatar. So we'll do that, but then we'll also have a sit down oral board and and we have a three step process for hiring. Uh, but yeah, it, it's interesting, but it gives us really good insight um, for for. Uh, one longevity in in that particular role, and then uh, you know skill set. How quickly are they are they to you know take take off and run with the actual you know results that they need to produce? Sure, so, sure. Yeah, but disc. I mean, this is uh, disc is is a great. Um, it's just a great assessment. And the Tony Robbins one. It, it's. I mean, it's pretty solid mm-hmm. for being you know a free a free assessment out there. Right. It's pretty solid. The thing is uh, understanding how to use you know the um, the the results. You know how to apply them into into your to your process. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, for somebody just starting out, you know, <clears> never <throat> maybe they're transferring from a you know W, uh, you know a job, right? Coming over mm-hmm. ten ninety nine. How should they set up a system if they've never done it before? Do you have any suggestions on how they can kind of set up a business system or what their first step should be? Um, I like the concept of reverse engineering. Mm-hmm. So, so one one mistake I did on on the transportation business and the transportation. I mean, I started that thing. I mean, it was just me. Uh, I bought a vehicle at an auction. I was doing uh, wearing all the hats and 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 I was really chasing the uh, the dollar, right? I, and I right. made it work, but I got burned out during that period of time, mm-hmm. um, just because I didn't I didn't love what I was doing, and and I was. I was thinking forward as opposed to reverse engineering, um, but it's hard to do when you don't have either mentorship or a direction or you know or something like that. It's uh, everything you're doing is is a hypothesis, right. right? But if you sit down and you figure out, okay, cool, uh, I'm gonna jump into this space. Say say that somebody wants to jump into ho- real estate wholesaling or or I don't know, they want to become an agent or you name mm-hmm. it. Um, okay, what do I need to? What do I like? Where do I see myself in three years? I mean, it's a super solid question. Maybe you know, simple, but. But you sit down, you start pondering, you know, on, on that. Okay, what do I want my revenue to be? I want to, I want to be making one hundred fifty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. uh, from from here to a three year mark. Okay, what does that look like? Um, okay, if I'm gonna go into the real estate space, uh, I know that average commission uh, commissions are seven thousand dollars, so I would need to close, uh, you know, around twenty transactions a month, uh, a year to right. hit, you know, a number that's in the one fifties. And you know what would that take? So start, you know, kind of crafting, yeah, you know, in in from a from a reverse engineering, you know, fashion, well, where you want to go, right? And you're gonna end up with this point of origin. Okay, the first thing is gonna be I need my license. Second thing is gonna be I need to talk to a broker. Third thing is gonna be I need to start setting up my marketing process and and that sort of thing, right? And mm-hmm. and uh, one important thing to understand is that we don't have to know it all. Like we don't have to understand the details of everything. As long as you have some sense of direction where you're headed. Um, I mean, you're going to be fine, right? I, I love the analogy of, of just, you know, taking a road trip. Um, if I were to drive, you know, to the Grand Canyon uh, from, from you know, from here, uh, it's, I don't, there's signs on the freeway. You know what I mean? Sure. I just got to know what street to, you know, jump on right now. That street right. is going to take me somewhere else. And then I'm going to see a sign that sign is going to take me somewhere else. And, and it's the same thing with entrepreneurship. It's just... Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, is it's understanding that there has to be a lot of you know consistency and tenacity be, behind all the actions. There's got to be mistakes, um, and uh, and and you know sticking through the the stickability really is what 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 makes it work. I mean, I can't tell you, bro, how many how many lessons I've learned just you know from mistakes, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know it's not at the end of the day it's a cliche again, but it's you don't lose, right? You learn. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and and yeah, that's helped me out quite a bit, right? Where do I want to be in three years? And I, I go back and ask myself those questions on a regular basis. Like, mm-hmm. am I on the right path? Is my company uh, or my companies are are they on the right path, right? What about the team? Are you know the team thriving or are we just you know kind of you know getting by? Yep. Um, and then you know reassess from there. Now speaking of, that's a great point. Um, you know your failures. What I guess what would be you've done a lot of deals, obviously, what would be like your worst moment you think as an investor? And what did you learn from that that you could share with the audience? Uh, man, I, I mean, I've had deals where were lost, uh, you know, six digits. Yeah. So, <laughs> so those are, those are not, those are not nice. Uh-huh. Um, and, and, um, well, I mean, the one I can think of, right. It's, it's a, we, it was about a, I mean, it was a six digit lost loss. And, um, the biggest thing on that one was really not not doing any of my due diligence. Um, a lot of it was just kind of shooting from the hip and 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 sure. not covering my bases, um, trusting uh, people who I who I shouldn't have you know trusted necessarily, but but uh, in a in a very careless way. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it, at the end of the day, we're, we're in business, man. And you may be an ethical person and, uh, you know, I may see the world as everybody collaborates. Everybody helps right. each other. Right. Yeah. Thankfully, 95 percent of my my right. environment is like that. But you still yeah. have that five percent. That's kind of fucked up. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, French. <laughs> uh, and uh, and you know what I mean? And, and you know, sometimes you get bit by that. But it, it's. Um, the biggest thing for me was, okay, cool, do your due diligence, you know, put everything in paper, set up the agreements and 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 make sure that you're covered from all bases, right? Yeah. Um, because I did make a big mistake. I mean, it was just, it was all my, at the end of the day, I took responsibility for my own faults. I mm -hmm. just didn't do, you know, enough due diligence on this thing. The deal went south, uh, people got paid and I got left on the margin. Um, but it, it was con contractual. I just, you know, it's something okay. silly that I missed in the agreements. And this was, you know, years ago, but it, you know, still got me. Yeah. So um, um, now we can get sour from that and then say, mm -hmm. oh, the hell with it. I'm not going to collaborate with anybody, you know, anymore. Right. But understanding that not, not everybody's like that. You know what I mean? I mean, the best, mm -hmm. some of the best deals in contrast, and some of the best deals and most lucrative deals have been with, uh, with other people, you know, people that bring me, you know, hey, let's work on this multifamily. We're working on a 75 property um, portfolio right now in Tampa, actually. Oh, nice. um, and, and we're putting that together. And and that's a that's a joint venture partnership, mm -hmm. right? One of a, one of my students found it, brought it to me, and we're putting this together. So it's a win win. Oh, cool. um, so it's <clears throat> it's really about you know collaboration is 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 key, uh, especially if if you don't have all the resources at hand. Somebody's jumping into entrepreneurship. It doesn't matter if it's real estate, you know, whatever it is, right? It's about being resourceful, yeah. um, and then tapping into the power network that's around you. Um, do your due diligence. Anytime you jump into an agreement with somebody else, it's like you're gonna marry that person for the duration of that you know venture, right? If it's right. a three month thing, it's a three month thing. In this case, yeah. it was a it was an eight month thing that went just south. It was like a bad bad marriage on yeah. on you know. <laughs> when it came to, to business um but um yeah they even took the dog uh but uh but i mean it it, it is what it is right it's just a, a, a matter of of being more diligent on the stuff that you're doing and then understanding that not, and not everybody operates like that mm -hmm. um and and to me like n not losing faith in people is one of the the hardest challenges that i've had sure. uh you know as i go along with it but it's something that i don't want to let go of you know what i mean yeah. I like, I like to start off with the right foot. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what business is just like a marriage, you know, your partners like you said, yeah. <laughs> can be worse than a divorce sometimes, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Definitely got to watch out. Um, yeah. Let's see. Now you've got your wholesaling business blueprint. Um, mm -hmm. What is that? And you know, how do people find out about that? So the, the blueprint is my coaching program. Um, I opened it up. It's, uh, it's, so it's six months access to me via text messaging. We work, you know, uh, one-to-one -one on deals and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then I have weekly coaching calls, which are open for lifetime. So somebody jumps into mm -hmm. the program, they can keep coming back to the coaching calls there every week. Nice. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's a whole bl uh, blueprint from, you know, day one, if you haven't done deals, it's, it's, you know, it still works. Um, and, and it just lays out the whole model. I mean, it really breaks down like everything that I do in my company, it's stuff, you know, technology stack, uh, stack strategies, uh, mm -hmm. you know, tactics, I, you know, we're pretty good about staying on top of the, uh, the times and the trends and, sure. and the pivots that we have to make. So we bring those into the coaching. Nice. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty loaded, um, pretty loaded, um, coaching program. Um, it's at REI wholesaling.com. If, uh, if you want to get more information on that, so yeah. REI wholesaling.com. Cool. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes too. So people can just click on the link. Yeah. And if anybody has questions, like they want to get a hold of me or when I'm pretty active on social media at Rafael Cortez, okay. CEO. So shoot me a DM if you're working on something, you have a quick question on, on I don't know, marketing or whatever, just, you know, I'm pretty responsive. So cool. Awesome. So, yeah, like I said, I was looking at your, your social media earlier. Uh, from what I've seen, I'm going to guess that you probably believe in the law of attraction. Thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it, oh, yeah. uh, is the law of attraction and do you have, you know, do you believe in that? Obviously you, you do. And do you have any, like, uh, any suggestions how people can, uh, harness that and also how that fits with any daily habits you have? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, man. It, it's, uh, one thing that, that has been a game changer for me. Uh, I mean, I, I, I meditate, I'm not the best at meditating, mm -hmm. but I try, you know, I'll sit down in silence and, and just contemplate and I'll think about it. You know, sometimes I don't even have a topic, but, but I'll sit there in silence and then it's just amazing. The stuff that just kind of starts to trickle in. So yes. one of the first things that I do in the morning is, is journal. Yeah. Uh, write down. I mean, it, it, like this thing is, goes everywhere with yeah. me. Nice. Um, my notebook and, um, and 
uh, it happens right after meditation. So I'll sit in silence for, you know, for maybe 10 minutes or something. So it's nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I'll jump into uh, just journaling, just jotting down ideas, being grateful, thank, you know, thankful about you know what I have and really having the awareness to look at, at the good stuff, right? Because it's easy right. to look at all the e emails and the fires and stuff that we have to put out. But yeah. But, um, you know, we don't need anybody to remind us about bad stuff. Like that's that's right. naturally happening because it's, it's our natural survival instinct, right? To, yeah. to get that stuff handled so we don't die. Right. Um, um, but what about the good stuff, right? Understanding what's good in life, understanding, mm -hmm. you know, the relationships, the, the new opportunities that are coming up on a regular basis, understanding um, that, you know, taking the next breath is, is a blessing, right? Exactly. And putting yourself in that good, you know, in that good vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, to to really attract more stuff it, it's just it's incredible man it's insane um the um the the i mean I can't, I can't explain the way it works i just know it works right if i'm yeah. if i wake up in the morning and i you know hit my toe and i'm pissed off for the rest of the morning the <laughs> whole day goes south right um but if i go back to to center and and meditate make that you know conscious effort to to write it out to be grateful and and then just put myself in a state of joy mm -hmm. uh, because joy is 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 a choice right. um things i mean it's like you, you make you make an instant 180 so mm -hmm. so so yeah that's that's it's absolutely huge i mean the right things and the right people and and opportunities just start to you know kind of get in front of you so sure. now do you do like uh vision boards or anything like that yeah yeah i mean i i, I started putting this elaborate vision board years ago yeah. uh and and i have it on my evernote <laughs> and it's it's on there and, and i mean i would go in there i have a statement right i have this this you know set of affirmations and just mm -hmm. you know internal conversations that i repeat to myself on a regular basis sure. um, and i used to go through that and you know maybe 30 seconds or something and then it turned into a minute now it like now it takes me like 10 15 minutes just to go through all the great stuff that <laughs> <laughs> that I have lined awesome. up, but it feels so good, bro. Like yeah. it feels so good at the end of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's it's just day, like, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good vibe reset. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So sometimes you know, crafting that vision takes takes a while, right? And it's not about you know. I used to have the car on there. I used to have the house, and and the funny thing is that you start hitting those, and and they 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 become mundane. Yeah. Like you start, okay, cool. What's an you know? So what's the next? What's going to replace that car? Like, well, right. it's empowerment. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's a, th a, a thousand students with great testimonials and, and mm -hmm. you know, new lives and, and whatnot like yeah. that it just becomes a whole different um you know uh space you know to mm -hmm. hold so so it's a beautiful thing when you have when you have that awareness of where you want to get to and 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 more importantly the gratitude behind it yeah i like yeah. it that's awesome man yeah so this is obviously the the passive road to retirement right yeah uh, i always ask what would be a top strategy for you for somebody uh, then once one kind of passive income stream, doesn't matter what it is, what would be one strategy you could recommend to somebody for a, for a passive income stream? Um, I'd go with multifamily. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's not, I mean, if it's managed, right, it's going to be semi-passive, right. but, yeah. but there's so many, um, one thing that I'm understanding of that, that I've gotten to, to understand over the last, you know, maybe six months to a year, uh, it, it takes the, uh, the same amount of effort, right. To do something small as to do something bigger, but, yep. but multifamily is not that far-fetched. Um, one thing that I'm, I'm seeing, and I do a lot of research in terms of trends and, and, you know, potential opportunities in the marketplace. Uh, we have a lot of baby boomers that are just trying to sell their businesses, uh, mm -hmm. their you know assets their holdings their portfolios and whatnot mm -hmm. and a lot of that stuff it can be can be seller financed right yeah. so it's mm -hmm. not even about forking up you know 1.5 million dollars to buy this you know 20 unit complex right. um it, it's you know okay what can we work out in certain in terms of creative financing uh thinking of value out opportunities so if you're able to craft deals like that which is one of the things that we focus on on, on the coaching if you know finding and, and and crafting deals that way um it's um I mean, you can you can put yourself in a really good spot where you have a value add asset, uh, and not necessarily sell it, assign it. You can keep it to your own portfolio and then start building right. it out. So, so yes. yeah, it, right it's, now is a great time because historically yeah. rates rise, seller financing comes back. So yeah, you know, and that I mean higher. that's yeah that's one strategy, right? Um, uh, then you have I mean innovations, you have you know multiple different you know ways of of structuring deals out there. But but I think I mean I I go back to to um, to to that you know particular niche in real estate mm -hmm. yep yeah cool so we're up we're about ready to wrap up here what uh if you were in my shoes for the interview 
What's one mm. question you would ask yourself that I didn't ask you? Um, my favorite question to ask when I'm on the podcast is, is, um, if I was walking down the street and I ran into my 17 year old self, what would I tell that kid? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell him? Um, I, I, I go with trust myself more. Nice. Yeah. I, I, and, and, and it's funny, it's bro. It's funny. You bring, you bring that up. Um, so I can bring it up, but I've, I've had, I've answered myself in different ways. Like. Uh, you know, through through the years, I guess, and now it'd be it'd be one of those things where oh, cool, I, like you get to a point where you have, you know, that the self confidence. We 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 have the know how in certain areas, right? But a lot of times, that uh, that's you know, the sense of doubt creeps in. You right. see people just killing it ten times over, and then where you're at. But mm-hmm. it, it's a matter of different talents, right? It's understanding that we all have strengths in 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 you know in in our given um, space. Right. Um, and it's one thing I didn't understand. I mean, I would have to feel like I needed validation from from everybody as I was trying to tap, especially because it was something new, and I've always been the kid that has that weird idea that nobody you know has really <laughs> you know had a, uh, or has a solid grip on. Right. Uh, and it's, you know all kinds of experimental stuff. I mean, you name it you know starting b- weird businesses and you know i don't know <laughs> shit like that but it's 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 a constant uh, for me it used to be this constant need for for okay am i uh, somebody's got to tell me or let me know that i'm on the right path right and i had sure. that lingering in the back of my head creating mm-hmm. doubt mm-hmm. uh which creates fear creates hesitation um and and uncertainty right so right. so more more than anything else is like just an emotional um strain but uh, i would definitely just trust myself more from the get-go yeah yeah, that too, that's a key to self confidence. You don't get that confidence unless you actually try something. It's kind of yeah, it works backwards. You know, you gotta yeah, gotta get past. Man, that I'm telling you, I I I love people who just you know wake up in the morning and they put their confidence pants on and like right, like, <laughs> they're ready to roll. Yep, exactly. It's like yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So yeah, for me it took a while, but <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, awesome. we'll get into our uh, our five to thrive before we do. Uh, if you can just give out your contact info one more time, social media, you know any links you got? Yeah, you can find uh, you can find me on so uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram. Um, it's Rafael Cortez CEO, mm-hmm. uh, and R A F A E L C U R T E Z CEO. Uh, I'm pretty active on there. Uh, DM, it's you know one of the fastest ways to get a hold of me. Um, and then reihosting.com for the hosting website. My website is ceopulse.com too. So. Okay. Oh, uh, contact info is there. Awesome. Yeah. So now five to thrive. So this is a word association game. Mm-hmm. I'll just rattle off five words, uh, you know, kind of rapid fire and just give me the first word or phrase that comes into your mind. The only caveat is you cannot repeat your answer. Okay. All right. First one, business systems. Uh, freedom. Mindset. Um responsibility hustle seasonal <laughs> real estate thriving and success subjective i like it <laughs> <laughs> dude that's solid i love that one i've never done that before <laughs> yeah it was uh it was have to thrive. To you, on. you know i appreciate your time <laughs> man i loved it man it's been fun thanks so much for the invite appreciate it brother. <laughs>